Ачала! What's up everybody out there in YouTube land? Wrath2501 here. Alright, this video has been requested several times. This is Which Punch Out Boxer is the Biggest Cheater? That is by Bumbles McFumbles, okay? So let's see what he's got here. I mean, they're all cheaters based by the fact that they exist, but you know, some of them go a little bit above and beyond. So let's see what we got here. And go. Okay, little Mac. Punch-Out! is one of Nintendo's longest tenured franchises, using yeah. boxing as a template for what essentially boils down to a puzzle game but with punches. As puzzle game. puzzles should have to put those <laughs> point dexters on our level. Of course, Punch-Out! isn't something you should take very seriously since you're going up against magical teleporting Indian men, guys wielding staves in the ring, and so thinks it's okay to kick in a boxing match. Yeah, However, bitch. All these guys raise a very valid question. How exactly does the governing body of Punch Out's boxing world define its rule set? The only Not at all. Flagrant fouls would be allowed is that there was literally no rule set whatsoever. If ha! this is somehow not grounds for at least a point reduction, Dude! you're gonna get someone with a knife in their gloves sooner rather than later. Yeah. So I wanted to see exactly which Punch Out boxers are breaking which rules of the sweet science. For this, I'll be looking at specifically Punch Out's Wii reboot from 2009. Since not ah. only is it the best looking, it's the most detailed, and will allow us to see what exactly these racist caricatures are doing to one of the players. Racist caricatures, oh man. Yeah, that's true, they are. Speaking start with the, the base. Player, however, Little Mac is probably the best place to start. Given the fact he's mm. every man from the Bronx, it's safe to assume that Mac is a pretty standard boxer, and you'd be right. From his attire, to his stance, to how he conducts himself in the corner, Mac is following almost every rule in the Unified Rules of Boxing, as established by the Association of Boxing Commissions and... Oh man, he's going in depth here! I didn't think he was going this in depth! ...that we can assume are followed, like proper fist wrapping, a clean checkup during the weigh-in, and no illegal substances. Although, getting back health from Doc eating a chocolate bar is up for debate. Bet. However, it's not a perfect record. See, Mac is actually breaking one of the most paramount rules in all of boxing. He's only 17. Oh, These really? These grown men are unleashing bear hugs, hondo rushes, and dreamland mm. expresses on someone not even night, old night. to drink to numb the pain. This would automatically disallow Mac to compete at such a high level of competition and would need him to take another year before professionally fighting. But yeah. maybe the WVBA allows him to compete for being a prodigy on Doc Lewis's recommendation? Either way, despite having the fundamentals down, Mac is just not ready. Some other admin I feel I should address I know. is the rules of boxing that would automatically disallow these fights from happening. First is weight. Is this like a versus thing? Mac is 107 pounds, putting him in the light flyweight division. The a little. The fights, Glass Joe, is 110 pounds, putting him in the flyweight division. If Mac wants to fight outside his weight class, he's going to need to at least reach the minimum weight for the class he wants to what fight. What the fuck? So he's bulking up to at least 108 pounds. Can he do that? If he manage that, he could stand on his scale a little weirdly. <laughs> or have a sandwich Hugger, before you. Who weighs in at over 400 pounds. Bruh. The class so far ahead of Mac's own that it doesn't even exist. He's just <laughs> a hot. Clearly the WBBA isn't concerned with weight classes. But what about that thing, points, though? Which is all well and good for basically everybody except Little Mac. At his weight, it's very likely, unless he plays the most defensive and evasive style ever devised, he will be killed in the ring. Weight Probably. Weight exists for a reason, and with Little Mac's pitiful reach, he'd never so much as be able to land a hit on anyone. So, so who the hell Mac is that? would realistically never be able to go up against even Disco Kid, who's as far from Mac on the weight chart as possible as heavyweight. But let's say for the sake of this video being made that Mac could get into the ring. Which of his opponents is breaking the most rules? First up is Glass Joe, D minus in human form. This poor son of a gun is 99 in the hole with only a single win to his name. Damn. Granted, that win is against Nick Bruiser, former world heavyweight champion. So really? He's still riding that buzz. How? All the way down to the mat. Everything yeah. about Joe is frankly up to par. His gloves, trunks, boots, corner behavior is all up to snuff. However, where we do have to mark an infraction is in his title defense match. Exclusive to punch out me <laughs> is title defense mode where you go up against the same 13 boxers from the base game with enhanced movesets to make them championship material. What does Glass Joe get? A pillow tied to his head. In his intro cut, it's not a pillow. 100th loss, it's shown that his doctor is so scared for his safety that he won't let him compete without headgear. Now, this is a <laughs> very, 
very big infraction. Possibly the biggest that you could get. Headpieces in boxing are strictly forbidden, as you're cushioning one of the most easily punchable parts of the body. The only way that Unless you both have it. is if both boxers get it. No, there you go. Well, Mac doesn't. If Joe's taking reduced damage from headshots, he has an unfair advantage. However, yeah. I'm not totally... He has an unfair advantage anyway, because he's bigger than him. In this game, if you lose 100 times, you get a headgear that you can wear during matches that what the hell? damage. Now, I will say that if you've taken 100 KO losses in professional fights, a headgear now is about as effective as a mommy kiss on a decapitation. <laughs> but it raises an interesting question. If Joe is fighting with this because he has to, does it count as an infraction? I mean, he literally can't fight without it thanks to his doctors in the WBBA. So he shouldn't be allowed to fight! Yes, it is. Unless Mac is also wearing one, you can't wear headgear. Now, if Mac also loses 100 times... He pushed the French out of him! Until he does, though, he's got one infraction against. Von Kaiser mm. comes next, and given the fact that he's shown being bullied by kids, I think Mac will do just fine. Mm. Kaiser seems totally up to board, just like... Look at he almost punched him in the nuts! bust out a rule you might not have even thought about. Kaiser's pants are actually the big problem. Mm. In boxing, it's required that you wear loose-fitting trunks that extend no further than the knees to better show oh. potential low blows. Huh. Kaiser's not only wearing them below his knees, he's got mm. them tucked into his boots. That's an infraction right there. But given that you wow. see his status as a boxing teacher, it's pretty safe to say that he's got no other major oversights in his boxing style. Disco huh. is after him, That's and cool. as I said before, this guy is massively out of Max Lee. Literally, he's double Max's own weight. At first, I thought Just the about. ball in his intro could count as an outside electronic, which you can't have. But upon closer inspection, it's more likely than not a part of the bombed-out ghetto gym that these fights take place. Huh. It's a professional fighting arena on Mondays and Thursdays, and senior bingo on the weekends. Yeah. However, you can nail him for using headphones in the corner. He could very easily be receiving outside illegal advice through those. There's yeah. no way to know. However, the biggest defense is in his title defense fight, where he foregoes the boxing show the the fashion forward leotard. Yeah. Fitting in with his lifestyle choice to take up boxer sizing, it's also boxer sizing. Elite. You mean kind of reminds me of a uh, what's his, what's his name? Richard Simmons. Your trunks and your chest with the seam of your boxing shorts. It also needs huh? I didn't know about that. That's interesting to know. Count as a low blow. He's not even wearing pants! Disco Kid is asking for low blows, and he has nobody to blame but himself. But True. Disco Kid comes out swinging with a record-setting two infractions. Here's hoping he doesn't get immediately... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, what the hell even is he? Probably one of the most iconic boxers in the franchise. King Hippo Dude. is also lousy with rule breaks. Before the fight even starts, King Hippo's weight, height, and nationality are all unknown. The fuck? By that logic, it's safe to say that he did not come to the required weigh-in and hasn't gotten a proper... Is he even a human, boxes. though, you know? Police of He's some kind of thing. To interpretation. <laughs> Before a punch is even thrown, he's already broken two rules. <laughs> but then we get to the fight, and instantly we got a violation for head covering. That funny yeah. crown may look good in marketing, but you don't get to take it into the This is almost like wrestling However, more than it is boxing. Fight, he somehow manages to keep it clean, save for his pants falling down. But that's a more public indecency thing than a boxing thing. In his title defense mode, however, we've got a bigger issue to deal with. His crown is back and actually bigger this time. But the real issue okay. to discuss is what's going on with his stomach. He's wearing body armor. What the fuck, if I dude? Said that the covering for a man's hole isn't the only problem here. Covering for a man's hole, really, dude? Tape on your body. That's why the big X over his tummy is legal. In a world Ooh. championship fight, you can't have tape on your person. So taping the manhole covering is a whole new rule break. King Hippo manages to break five different rules in his fights and puts him well ahead of the rest of the pack. Damn. Moving on to the major circuit now, Piston Hondo is up. Ooh. And with him, we get the most up-to-bar boxer thus far. Literally, really? the only thing you can get him on is his headband. That's because it's a head covering and it might allow punches to slide off easier. Other than that, Hondo's playing the exact same game you are. This is even a problem exclusive to the Wii version because in the original, he fights without yeah. a headband. Cool. Simply though, he's been barred from competition for the most heinous crime that a boxer, nay, a human, can commit. Oh, God. Pirating manga. Pirating manga. After him <laughs> is Bear Hunter, and given the fact oh, God. that he was made by a Canadian This studio, guy, you'd holy think crap. This rep one of the more noble ones. There's no. A lot to unpack <laughs> First, this is a tire. Just like Von Kai's yeah. been showing off those knees. Also, like Disco, there's no distinct line between his upper and lower body. His freaking chest hair is like. It's like freaking Saxton Hale with his chest hair. Is in the shape of a tree, where a Saxon gets out in the shape of Australia. In boxing, you need to either be clean shaven or have well groomed facial. Oh, no beards! Certainly, no beards are allowed. Something like that acts as a cushion for the jaw. 
In between rounds, oh. he's also chugging on maple syrup and taking naps. This Are you sure it's maple syrup? Reactions. The consumption of anything other than water while in the corner that you may associate with a certain someone else and not taking the fight Bruh. seriously. Not only is it disrespectful, but it's also a breaking of the rules. Huh. However, let's get the big one out of the way. He's not fighting alone. Bearhugger brings a squirrel with him into the ring for a title. A squirrel? Points. Let's ignore the animal cruelty because it's shown that the squirrel gave consent. Wait, what? Bruh. It's shown that the squirrel. <laughs> oh gave my god, they use that? <laughs> what the hell is the matter with you, dude? And instead, focus on the rule of boxing that only the fighters and the ref can enter the ring. Can't do tag yeah. team boxing despite how cool that sounds. Yeah, it does sound Fairly cool, actually. Bye, squirrel. Rule breaks in the ring. Boy, I sure hope he isn't immediately shown up. <laughs> this one's just f***ing weird. <laughs> Let's get the elephant out of the room for now and just deal with it later. Weird. First off is the obvious head covering. You can't do yeah. that. Also, he's wearing full pants rather than boxing trunks. It's blasé at this point. And also the last boxer in the game to break this rule, since from here on out, we're all playing fair in the pants. I think that gets a religious pass, pants, though. Which is incredibly illegal, which you can only do because of... Uh, Wait, what? No, let's just get it over with. Now, in the unified rules of boxing, there isn't anything exactly outlawing the use of magic, but yeah. at the same time, I feel like that's only because Evander Holyfield never tried a fucking cup and ball trick in the middle of a match. So <laughs> he's obviously cheating with the use of magic, awesome. but yeah. it's not that easy. Essentially, I need to make up a rule on the fly here. Do yeah. I penalize him under each different class of magic used? Do I penalize him once under the broad umbrella of magic usage in general? Mm. Are clones counted as each class, I would despite say. Despite the fact that they're the same guy? If the clones can't do damage to Little Mac, are they a threat? Ultimately, it can't No, down to but this. they're distraction. I'm handing out an infraction. I think that is an infraction. One for the floating, and I'll give mm. him an infraction equal to the maximum amount of clones he uses in one fight, which is in his Mirage Dance, where he uses a clone in the back and one to try to pincer you. So, I'm mm. giving him an overall four infractions for the usage of magic. That lands Tiger with eight infractions when you add in the use of a flying carpet, which again, isn't covered in the rules, but I'm just pretty confident about it. Yeah, hunch. that's true. As a breath of fresh air, Don Flamenco only gets two infractions, with the first being for the toupee that he wears during matches. Ah. That's a head covering, and as unlikely a strike to the top of the head is, no matter how little it covers, an infraction is still an infraction. However, his second one is for one that you might not have even seen coming. In his mid-match corner rests, he'll spritz himself with perfume. There are actually a few reasons that this is illegal. First off, the use of an aerosol can be used as an irritant for the other boxer, as the scent huh. can disorient them. That's and interesting. the actual perfume applied can cause the gloves to slip off. But key amongst these facts is that in the corner, only an adrenaline solution, avatine, what? and thrombin are allowed to be applied. Unless that thing is filled with liquid adrenaline, he can't have it. Dude! Also, iffy on if this counts as magic, but I'm willing to let it slide as it's outside of the fight. Recreational magic is fine. But thankfully, it looks okay. like the worst of the cheaters are behind us as we move on to the world circuit. Um, who's next exactly? Ah! Oh, fuck that. Sonopinski <laughs> is next, and let's just get the one out of the way to start. God, he was a bitch to fight like the old Nintendo game. Syrup, you can't drink soda while in the corner. Yeah. But he brings a whole new level of cheating by doing it in the middle of a match. Not only does this already fall under the previously explained rule, but he's also hell? bringing foreign objects into the ring. Yeah. Not to mention he's a sloppy drinker, and by getting Damn. soda onto his chest, he's applying an illegal substance to his body. I'm sure you know how sticky Dude. soda can be. It was so supposed to be to liquor or vodka. In it. But now for the big one, as he's the only boxer that we know of that's dope. That we, we see Doc is making him special soda oh. in the lab that lets him pull a truck with his teeth. What and he's the guzzling hell? 18 bottles of this stuff in a match in his title defense. Damn. Team. How's he alive? That should Brown be enough to kill him. To do in sports and to do it in front of a crowd at the expense of innocent Fanta is almost admirably bold. Bald Bull comes next, and with a head shape oh, like God. that, you can imagine he's gotten a few broken rules under his belt. For starters, between rounds, he's shown applying hot towels to himself, which, given the rules of boxing, he can't do. You can only apply a cold towel to yourself if you want to use one, but maybe it could be a cold towel, and he's just so hot from boxing that he's... That's true. Thing. I'm willing to give it him that be. one, but one I can't budge on is his rage issues. What the Bob fuck? Just oh, my sort God. Of rampages and wins fights by accident rather than on purpose. Bleh. As such, after winning the title in title defense mode, he's so blinded with rage that he attacks the... What the... Throwing oh, my God. Did he like... That doesn't just get you a penalty. That gets you banned for life. 
Yeah. As well, when he's in the corner, he's shown lifting weights, something I'm not exactly sure on the legality of. Leaning on the side of no, but when you This get one to doesn't look as big as the one the in the crowd, Nintendo one. I feel like that's enough Whoa. to get the ref to ask you to leave. That's Super because someone knocked the hell out. Comes next, and with oh. him, he brings a ton of infractions. One of a kind, too. So He used to be one of the final fight. bosses. Yes. First off is the gold chain and earrings that he wears. Yeah. The boxing rules dictate that you can't have any piercings, and you need to take them out before a fight You starts. get hurt with that shit. Speaking of attire, his trunks have personal branding on them, which is strictly forbidden. Along really? That, in between rounds, huh. he's taking questions from the press, which violates rules regarding press distance oh, in the really? ring, allowing them only on specific sides of the ring from a certain distance. Huh. On top of that, he's got a personal electronic with him in the camera that he's taking selfies Okay. With. Then there's the foreign object he brings into the ring when he puts sunglasses on to try to hit the super macho clothesline. Oh. Speaking of which, I think it's fair to say that there's a little bit of a chance that there's outside interference. The flash photography only gets bright when he goes for the clothesline, and him putting on the glasses acts as a signal to the audience members to start flashing their bulbs to mess with Little Mac. And huh, then, presumably yeah, thinking that that was a true. little too subtle of a cheat, he just cold clocks the ref. However, Bruh. this is also a time where there's a non-fighter that gets a rule penalty. As in title defense mode, the lighting manager would earn an infraction by discriminating against Macho Man and not shining the light on him. It doesn't oh, matter if they're fighting, really? it's still a penalty that's boxing related. Wow, really? Finally, that's cool, I'm Mr. learning here. Sandman, the world oh, champion. damn, yeah. There's a reason. This guy's entire strategy is sound, completely and utterly. Makes sense, since this guy isn't a cartoon character like the rest. He's a boxer. Yeah, he's... Even the most you could levy he's against him is the fact a boss. that in title defense, there isn't a clear line of demarcation between his waistband and trunks. They're both black, so it could be difficult, but the different texture used and the fact that the stripes on the side of the trunks stop at the waist could yeah, be Yeah, they are a bit Given of a the different shape. No one in the shape. WBBA wants to tell me can't wear his trunks like that. I'm yeah. going to say it's less of a violation and more of a please, please don't, don't hurt me. That's okay, Mr. <laughs> Champion, sir. <laughs> please don't hurt me. I was putting this one off because the highest amount of infractions yeah, what was that thus guy far is Great Tiger with eight. Now, this boxer has got to be that guy. Let's go. Let's Wait, go. what? Aaron Ryan 19. is the first boxer in the world circuit and was made to represent the typical dirty boxer. But they didn't have to go this far with it. Aaron Wait, Ryan may what? be a fellow countryman, but that doesn't mean I'm going to let slip what he tries to pull. Starting off, it's safe to assume that for the whole game, boxers have been getting their gloves the standard way. In a professional boxing fight, boxers get their gloves provided by the venues. However, because Aaron Ryan's using loaded gloves, oh, he's clearly bringing them from home. On top of that, we what know that he wraps fuck? his fists properly, but yet again, that's something that he did at home, and it wasn't inspected by the ref. Bringing these things from home and not having them inspected is four penalties already. And that's Damn. not to mention the little fact that he has loaded horseshoes in his boxing yeah. gloves. He's planning on killing Little Mac at this pace. On yes. top of that, he's shown throwing out the classic boxing cheats, trying to throw elbows and headbutts at Little Mac, as well as jumping off the ropes for that headbutt. Including that he's that's very potentially illegal. trying to throw the fight by allowing Mac to get free hits in literally asking him to hit him. No ref would allow that. But that's not it, as Aaron that's Ryan supposed to be a taunt, though, to attack it? Mac before the bell sounds between rounds, and in doing such, throws the ref away. That's yeah, one of the biggest that... no-nos in boxing. And yeah, don't of the screw with the ref. Two dozen infractions that Aaron Ryan accrues. Another thing to note is that there is a difference in the rules regarding intent to cheat and actually cheating. If you Wait, load what? your gloves, that's one strike. Actually throwing a punch is a different one entirely. However, this Seriously? is all before his biggest infraction in title defense mode. Not only does he steal Max gloves from the minor circuit after breaking his old ones, he then goes on to fashion his old gloves into a flail. What? So obviously, bringing a weapon oh, into the thing? ring as well as oh, using that weapon for illegal. But that's yeah. not even it. The glove he's using as a flail is old and ragged, and the rules state that if a glove is in such bad condition, it should be replaced by the venue. So even his cheating is cheating. <laughs> even more, <laughs> dude. When he gets knocked down, he'll attempt to throw one more swing with his weapon. And when a fighter is going down, they can't throw any more punches. The ref has already ruled them down and is waiting to deliver the 10 count. And finally, Ryan is also seen inciting and fighting with the crowds to the point that they start throwing stuff into the ring. <laughs> it's almost admirable how much cheating he manages to sneak into a fight that probably won't take that long. It's not even close that Aaron is cheating twice as hard as the next two biggest cheaters combined. And they were bringing Dude. squirrels, clones, and magic. Aaron Ryan did his cheating all on his own. This goes beyond being banned from competition. He's gonna be killed at this rate. Yeah. Oh, is that it? The oh, WBA is going to have a hell of a lot of paperwork to go through to clear yeah. up these infractions. And without these cheaters, the league would probably Dude, what the like hell is their rule set then? people, and one of those people would be Glass Joe, and that's not much of a league. So ha! please accept my proposal for a new little Mac designed to line up with the rest of these flagrant rule breakers. So, um... <laughs> oh, dude! Um, 
Bruh! You can see here that um, I, I gave you him gave him a 44 <laughs> Magnum. Oh, he's got a part two. Okay, we'll give you that. Oh, and of course, Donkey Kong. Donkey bitch ass. Got to do something about that. All right, so. Which Punch-Out Boxer is the biggest cheater? Okay, so it's Aaron Ryan, apparently. So, hope you guys enjoyed that. That was a good one. I actually learned quite a bit about boxing. I didn't know. This guy went, he went in depth to this. He didn't just, like, throw out some just stuff, like, just, of course, you know, Tiger's Magic and crap like that. No, I mean, he and Bold Bulls, I know, I figured the thing with the mantle cover, that had to be a cheat. But, he talked about all the stuff I didn't even think about. I never even knew that was cheating. Huh, that's neat. All right, so... I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. I did. Uh, like this video. Subscribe. Get down to Bumble McFumble's channel. Link in the description. Like the original and sub to him over there. And I will definitely be doing part two. And I will see you guys next time. Tune in every day for new content. Bye-bye.